Welcome back to another cooking video. I'm Chef Tavon and I'm going to teach you how to make tamago. Tamago is a Japanese omelette. It's a very traditional dish and it goes very well with sushi and it's used sometimes on top of nigiri to make a sort of omelette nigiri and it's just a delicious thing to know how to make. So, I'm going to teach you how to make it and this is my flat kitchen. It's different to my studio kitchen and we're here because the cook plan to make tamago doesn't work on the induction cooker. So I thought I can do this anywhere. Why not do it here? Okay, so let's get cooking. Let's go. All right, so I'm just gonna add one tablespoon of mirin, which is a Japanese rice wine, which is very sweet. And now add 25 grams of sugar and two grams of salt. I've just added both of them into this one bowl to make it easier. I'm gonna add 120 milliliters of dashi stock. If you don't know how to make dashi stock, check out the link on the top left of your screen now. Okay, I'm just gonna mix this in until the sugar dissolves into the liquids. This might just take a little while. And once that's done, you take your six eggs, whites and yolks and throw them inside a bowl. Then we add the mixture that we just made a second ago. And there's still a little bit of sugar on the bottom, so we're just gonna whisk it in. Okay, make sure it all gets into the mix, there we go. And then just whisk this together lightly. Now, if you don't have a chopstick, just use a whisk. There we go. Once it's mixed in, you're gonna to wanna to pour this into something that you can easily pour out. So this beaker will do perfectly fine. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put this to one side and put my camping cook fire. I'm using this because it, the pan I'm using doesn't work on induction cook. So I just light it on, okay, like this, and turn it on. Beautiful. All right. Now what you do is you just put your pan onto the fire and let it heat up till it gets really hot. Okay, and at this point you wanna add some cooking oil. You just wanna layer that will cover the entire bottom of the pan and then you wanna let that heat up just before smoking point. And then you wanna let it cool down a little bit and throw it away. Okay, and now I'm just gonna rub it in with a little bit more oil just to make sure it's nice and lubricated on the bottom. And then once it reaches the right temperature, about 180 degrees Celsius, you should feel a nice big plume of heat rising from the pan and that means it's at the right temperature. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna add my egg mixture. You wanna add a little bit, just enough to cover the whole surface of the bottom of the pan and make a thin sort of pancake out of it. Okay, now it's a little bit hot so I'm just gonna control the temperature, bring it a bit down, make sure that egg doesn't burn on the bottom. That's very important. Okay, and if you see any big bubbles, just pop them. Now I'm just making sure it doesn't stick to the sides too much and just moving the pan so that the egg makes an even layer of omelette. Okay, here we go. Now I'm just gonna separate the sides, make sure it's loose enough to start to flip this thing. And to flip it, all you wanna do is just put your chopsticks at the end and lift the pan up and guide it over into its right spot. Now it might be a bit hard the first time, because the pan's still not quite used to the egg and it's sticking to it. Okay, so just move this thing forwards, just after I put some more oil. Make sure you keep the pan well lubricated, otherwise the egg will stick. Now I'm just gonna add some more. And at this point, you wanna make sure that you lift up the omelet and let the egg mixture go underneath so it doesn't burn the omelet. Okay. Here we go, perfect. Pop any big bubbles that may appear so they don't uh, undercook. And you want to start flipping this thing once about 70% of the egg is cooked. So now, all right, great. Okay, I'm just gonna flip it one more time because it didn't completely go all the way around. There we go, great. Okay, and again, you add some oil. Every single time you finish one layer, you add a little bit more oil and lubricate it. Okay. Perfect. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more egg again. And you repeat the process over and over until you've used up all your egg mixture. Okay. So just let it cook a little bit. And again, lift up the cooked egg and get that egg to go underneath it so it doesn't burn it. And also it creates a better seal on the next layer. And once it's reached about 70, 80% cooked, you wanna start flipping it again. So you wanna make sure you flip it now before it's fully cooked so that the egg layers glue together and becomes one 
even piece. If you wait till it's fully cooked, then it will just be a roll of egg and it won't be the same thing. Okay. Whoops, just drop a little bit there, no worries. Just push it all down and then just oil it up and then push it the other way and then oil that side up again. Okay. Now just add in some more egg. If at any point uh, the egg starts to stick to your pan a lot, then what you want to do is just throw a pinch of salt on there and rub it away with a tissue again with the chopsticks. And this will sort of clean it off and make sure that you can keep cooking. Okay, so just pop those big bubbles and put one chopstick behind and flip it over. Okay, just some more oil again and then move it that way, some more on this side, and then add some more egg. Okay, just great. And again, lift it up. This process becomes a little bit repetitive, but you just have to do it, and the more you do it, the better you get. Okay, just pop that big bubble, and look, that's about 70, 80%. Now you put one chopstick behind, and then you lift the pan up and then sort of guide it in the air as it comes down into the right spot. It's really hard to describe, but that's how it happens. Okay. Some more oil again, move it to the front. And then add some more egg, one last time I think. I think we've got a little bit more left. Okay, again lift it up and just let that egg go underneath it. Perfect. And you can see how lubricated the pan is because the egg just glides off of it. Okay, just pop those little bubbles. And again, I'm going to put one chopstick behind and just one in front and then flip the pan up. And in the air we catch the egg and turn it over and guide it back into the spot. Okay. And now for the last time, just a little bit more oil again. Okay, now it's not too much oil, it's just a very thin layer at the time. Okay, and then add the last bit of egg. And one more time, just lift up that egg just so it doesn't burn. We're nearly done here. At the finish, one last flip. Okay, so one chopstick behind and then just Flip it up, catch it in the air, and turn it over. Here we go. There we go. Nearly came out of the pan there, but we're perfect. It's done. Now you take the hinoki lid of this pan, which is specially made to fit into it, and you press it in just to compress it more and make it into the right shape. Flip it over, compress, cook the sides a little bit, flip it over, compress, and keep doing that until you feel it's the right shape. And then, there we go. Tamago done. And now to cut it. Okay, just slice your tamagoki into two fifths of an inch slices, that's one centimeter thick. And you can place them on top of sushi rice, make nigiri tamago, or you can just eat it as is. It's very delicious, it's a very interesting omelette, this is how the Japanese do it. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to share it and like it. And to make the sharing easy, I put a button there. You just click on it and you go to Facebook and you share it on that. Now, the pan I was using is this one. It's the one I recommend. A copper pan is beautiful. You just have to learn how to work with it. Uh, by that, I mean you have to season it properly. And seasoning is very simple. You just take the pan, bring it to a high heat, add oil, and then when it starts to smoke, turn the fire off and let it cool down naturally. And this creates a chemical reaction in the oil that binds to the metal and creates a non-stick layer of fat on the pan. And you should never ever wash it with water or soap. If you want to clean it, you take a tissue, you clean the inside, you throw the tissue away. And if there's food stuck onto it, use a little bit of salt which acts like sandpaper and removes that food and then the oil can get underneath it and create a non-stick layer again. Okay. 
Now there are other pants, so I've bought some cheaper alternatives and I just can't seem to work with these. So I would recommend you stay away from these. They seem like they might work better, but they just don't. So don't do that mistake. Okay, so now I hope you enjoyed this video and here's a little bit of slow-mo. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you guys next week.